Hello everyone and welcome to a special episode of Real History. I'm your host, Jared Frederick, and I suppose we can call this segment Real History with a Ranger. I'm going to have to trademark that and make it a future <laughs> series within our series. Uh, but I am here at Reconstruction Era National Historical Park. I got the full title. You got it right. All right, beautiful. I love it. And uh, we are located in uh, historic Beaufort, South Carolina, and I am sitting here with a good Civil War buddy of mine, Rich Condon. Thanks for having me. A loyal Pittsburgher. Uh, also, in the past, has run the blog Civil War Pittsburgh. That's and correct. So, if you're a Civil War fan, definitely got to check that out. But for today, what we are here to talk about, very briefly, is the history of Reconstruction as seen through film. So, Reconstruction Air National Historical Park uh, began in January of 2017 as a national monument. And then in 2019, uh, it was voted to be a national historical park. So, um, that's kind of the way we've been functioning uh, since then. And, uh, you know, we actually have three different sites in the area. It's not, um, you know, a lot of people picture a national park being this large area of preserved federal land. We're a little bit spread out and we're a little mm -hmm. bit cut up. So we have our main visitor center in downtown Beaufort, where you know visitors can uh, you know, kind of learn about where Beaufort County, South Carolina, which is where we are, uh, fits into this bigger picture of reconstruction. They can go out to St. Helena Island, the site of uh, Penn Center, the site of the first Freedmen School established here in 1862. Um, and then also, uh, our third site is down in Port Royal, about four miles south of Beaufort, um, the site of Camp Saxton. It's the first uh, training facility and recruiting uh, depot for African American soldiers who eventually went on to serve in the first South Carolina infantry. So we touch on these different themes here uh, and kind of connect them mm -hmm. through various programs yeah. that we offer at these sites. And so often when people think about reconstruction, they think of 1865 as the starting point, but as, as you articulated very well in your walking tour that we just went on, it starts a little bit earlier here in Beaufort, and that's a good tie into our, our cinematic part of Absolutely. all of this, because a portion of the movie Glory is set in this community, kind of as a staging ground for the regiments. Maybe you can offer us uh, some perspective on what role the 54th Massachusetts played here in this area. Sure. So, you know, as you mentioned, uh, Reconstruction really effectively begins here uh, at the very end of 1861 with the arrival of U.S. soldiers. Um, all of the, you know, white plantation owners, all the Confederate troops of these sea islands vacated the area. And so we have this opportunity to begin reconstruction here before anywhere else. And so part of that is enlisting African-American soldiers and, and having African-American soldiers here. The 54th Massachusetts, you know, if we fast forward, is arriving in Beaufort in June 1863. At this point in time, the 1st South Carolina Infantry I mentioned that was formed at Camp Saxton and the 2nd South Carolina Infantry mm -hmm. are already here. In fact, when they finally arrive in Beaufort, um, and you know, I always like to, you can picture them coming in on this, you know, flat boat along the Beaufort River, along Bay Street, and the guys are swatting mosquitoes on their necks. And, Which I was doing during the tour. Exactly. So it's very <laughs> realistic. Um, but one of the first things they experience are these men who were formerly enslaved at the, the second South Carolina infantry. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, they're all, uh, they're all Gullah men. So if anybody, right. you know, is looking to do research on the South Carolina low country, you'll hear Gullah Geechee uh, mm -hmm. quite a bit. Um, all of these men that you're seeing in the second South Carolina, are formerly enslaved Gullah Geechee men. Mm -hmm. um, but I digress. Uh, you know, what you see depicted in Beaufort um, is kind of the first experiences of what the 54th were seeing in this town that had been essentially liberated um, more than a year beforehand. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for those of you who've seen the film, and we, we've yet to analyze that film in depth on real history, but rest assured we're going to. But the film gives this illusion that. A lot of these guys met a very horrific end, and that was it. But that was not the case. And their story picks up right here. Yeah. What you see uh, at the end of Glory uh, is really the beginning of their kind of military career in the low country on the front lines. Um, you know, of course, they saw action on uh, James Island before Battery Wagner. Um, but, you know, they didn't all 
die there. Uh, you know, they weren't all left behind there. They mm -hmm. weren't all buried on the beach. Um, of course, you know, Colonel Robert Goldshaw was, and they did take heavy casualties. Uh, those guys were all buried in a long burial trench on Morris Island. Um, but, you know, there's quite a few guys who made it out alive, um, who uh, there's approximately 50 who were captured and actually uh, taken to the old uh, city jail in Charleston. And then you have a number who were wounded and make it back to U.S. Yeah. lines. A lot of those guys, if not, well, if not all of them, are brought back here to Beaufort uh, to hospital number six, where they're going to recuperate. Mm -hmm. And seeing that place um, on your walking tour, for me, it was very profound. Yeah. Um, like realizing, like this is where their story continues, and this is where they rebuild. Uh, but speaking of rebuilding, let's talk a little bit more about reconstruction. Sure. Um, in the context of cinematic history, and I, I think we could make the argument that Hollywood doesn't have a great track record um, <laughs> in regard to conveying the complexities of Reconstruction. And uh, the, the two earliest instances, perhaps, uh, that are worthy of our conversation were very important films, blockbusters of their time, that is D.W. Griffith's The Birth of a Nation in 1915, and then we also have Gone with the Wind in 1939. Um, and Gone with the Wind especially, it's a piece of Americana, it's a beloved American film, landmark piece of cinema. How does it do with the history though? Especially in regard to reconstruction. I would say it's fairly, um, it's fairly one-sided. Uh, you know, I know, um, you know, from my own research, uh, looking into uh, Civil War veterans, particularly uh, U.S. military veterans who saw the movie on its release weren't too thrilled with how they were depicted mm -hmm. in this, uh, this piece of cinema. In fact, uh, back in, uh, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, veterans who saw the movie um, encouraged people to boycott it. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, there's a reason behind that. Indeed. Yeah. So rather uh, unsavory interpretations in regard to the politics and the, certainly the racial components Absolutely. of all. It definitely a, a product of the Lost Cause mythology. Um, you know, and all that said though, it's it's even less heinous than what the birth of a nation is that features blackface and every historical stereotype yeah. imaginable. Uh, but you know, I think, uh, you know, in our current age and the, the racial reckoning and the reinvigorated civil rights movement that we currently mm -hmm. see going on in the United States, um, people are coming to terms with Reconstruction in a way that they never really have before. And I think, uh, as far as motion pictures go, perhaps the movie Free State of Gems is a good representation of this reversal sort of trend. So what were your thoughts on Free State of Gems? I would say, um, you know, kind of uh, the material culture side. Indeed. Uh, I think it was a great depiction of, you know, the, the true story of Reconstruction. Um, not necessarily affected by the lost cause uh, mythology that you know played a big part in Gone with the Wind or Birth of a Nation. Um, but what I thought was really impressive is how they're depicting, uh, especially in the latter part of the movie, um, you know the Union League, for example, yeah. and showing the atrocities that are being committed against uh, freed African Americans uh, when they're trying to vote or register to vote. Right. Um, I can't recall the name of um, the character's name that's uh, uh, actually lynched because he's an yeah. court encouraging African Americans. Yeah. He's to a composite character. He wasn't a, a real life individual. Right, yeah. right. But, um, you know, they're, they're kind of depicting this true story of Reconstruction. Moses. Was, Moses, that, that was his name. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, they're, they're depicting this truer story of Reconstruction yeah. outside of that Lost Cause mythology. And that's the first time yeah. I've seen it depicted that way. Yeah, for sure. Um, and indeed, like, the material culture element of it is like really horrible. Um, <laughs> like it's right up there with, with going with the wind. But, <laughs> but I think one could make the argument. You know, we can nitpick and you know count stitches, as the old saying goes, among Civil War reenactors. Right. But the more important thing is, is if they get the narrative to a better degree of truthfulness. I'm willing to overlook some of the uh, material shortcomings. Yes, yeah. and that's in the that's film. why you know I would. If somebody wants to see a good, proper depiction of uh, kind of in a nutshell how Reconstruction is yeah. playing out, that's a good place to start. Yeah, very good. Well, you know, one of the main characters on 
the tour that, that Rich delivered earlier today. There's a gentleman by the name of Robert Smalls, and you mentioned at the outset of your tour, that I was really happy to hear about, um, is that it seems that Robert Smalls is soon to receive a cinematic depiction of his end. So, tell us about Robert Smalls, how he ties in with this place, and why people should come and visit you. Sure. So first off, I'll, I'll start by saying, um, one of the most common questions I get at this park, especially after people hear the story of Robert Smalls, is why isn't there a movie made about this guy yet? Now that's changed. Um, as of last year, uh, 2021, uh, Amazon actually uh, mentioned that they're producing a film about Robert Smalls' life. And there's a reason for that. And not only is he uh, very uh, crucial to Beaufort County's history, Beaufort's history, but to our national story. You know, he's seen as kind of this, uh, this beacon of hope to the African-American community for what he did during and after the Civil War. You know, this guy is born enslaved here in Beaufort. He self-emancipates uh, himself, his family, uh, the crewmen aboard his ship, the CSS Planter, um, gets them to freedom. And, you know, with that, he's building a foundation for a successful post-war political career. He, he, you know, has launched this level of celebrity where he's seen as a beacon of hope. Um, as far away as, you know, places in western Pennsylvania, people know his name the following year. Um, and so I think, you know, Robert Smalls really embodies the successes and the, the hopes of Reconstruction. Um, and he brings a lot of that to fruition. Mm. A, a seminal part of that story transpires here. What will people find when they come here? and what sort of story is unveiled to them by park rangers like yourself? So, you know, typically if, if people go on a, a ranger uh, guided program, um, you know, we do, we are able to go to the Robert Smalls house. Uh, you know, we can talk about how he acquired that house. You know, uh, he actually purchased that house that he lived in for the rest of his life until 1915 through tax auctions that were held here at Beaufort. He was able to purchase the land and property of his former enslaver, which, you know, isn't limited to just Robert Smalls. It happens for many other African Americans here, but his story is most well known. Mm -hmm. um, you, know, you can learn about that. And of course, uh, go to Tabernacle Baptist Church where Smalls is buried today uh, and where you can actually see a bust of Robert Smalls. It was erected in 1976, almost a century after mm -hmm. Reconstruction ended in most other places. Um, and, you know, all along the way, you're kind of learning uh, the intricacies of, you know, Robert's existence and what we know about him. Unfortunately, he didn't keep any uh, diaries that we know of. A lot of it comes from family oral histories uh, and official documentation from his time spent in Congress, where he did five terms. So an incredible story. There's a lot of the story. And it's just one of many that you discuss here. Absolutely. At, at Reconstruction. Yeah, there's other stories that, you know, one of the exciting things about working at a park like this is there are thousands of other stories to uncover. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things about Reconstruction, you know, this park is dedicated not just to Beaufort County, but to Reconstruction across the nation. Mm -hmm. um, think of how many stories have not been documented, or if they were documented, if they were scrubbed from the record. Um, you know, one of the things you see at the end of the 19th and early 20th centuries with films like Birth of a Nation or Gone with the Wind is trying to underplay the roles that African Americans played during Reconstruction. You know, a lot of, sadly, uh, a lot of records as a researcher um, that drop off happen around 1877. What else is happening then? The exciting thing here is, you know, there's a lot of stories to be told like Robert Smalls. Um, that have uh, yet to be uncovered. Indeed, and I hope when they do bring his story to screen, they do it justice, and I hope that the byproduct of that is that a whole lot more people come and experience your park. Absolutely, that'd be great. So, if you ever find yourself here along the Carolina coast, come check out Reconstruction, Reconstruction Era National <laughs> Historical Park. There are certainly a lot of great stories to be found here. And with all that said, we thank you for joining us once again on Real History. Thank you.